Hey, what's going on guys? IO Studios here from the Cinema 4D tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do a depth of field effect. So um, let's get started. First, we are going to make our backdrop like we always do. So we're going to do this by just scaling up a cube. And we're just going to make it just like, like that big should be good. Uh, we'll make it a bit bigger, it's fine. Um, we'll make it really long as well, just like that. Okay. Um, Enable fillet, and we're going to make it have a pretty big fillet. We'll make it have like a, I don't know, like 200. No, well, no, sorry. Four, uh, we'll do 300. All right, there we go. 300 should be good. We're going to make it pretty big in general, just like that. Okay, move it up above the grid thing there. And we're going to make the object editable. And we'll go to polygon selection mode. We're going to delete all these polygons. Hit Control A, and shift left click to deselect all these polygons, and hit delete. Good, good, good. So now we got our nice seamless backdrop, and we're gonna make a new material, just default material, and apply it to that. Okay. Now we're gonna put our camera in right about um, here, and we're gonna scale our material according, or our, sorry, not our material. What am I saying? Our uh, backdrop. So we're just gonna make it quite a bit bigger, and we're gonna make it bigger like that, a bit bigger like that, and bigger like that. Okay. Because we want a massive backdrop. And we're just going to position it just like that. I think should be good. And also, go to your render settings. And we'll just set the... For now, we're not going to do anything else. We're just going to set our width to 1920 and our height by 1080. We'll just do that for now. And we will deal with all the GI settings and all that stuff later. So we're just going to move just like that. We'll just move the camera into position. I think just like that should be good. Uh, we'll move it a bit towards the center. All right, there we go. That's good enough. Now we're going to add in a sphere, and we're going to put it right here. So we'll actually go into our camera and position the sphere here. Now I want this bigger sphere, bigger sphere. Um, I'm going to scale it up to about, uh, we'll do about 250 centimeters. And we're just going to put the sphere right here. And we're going to set the segment to 264. We're just going to copy, okay, so we're going to actually go out of our camera. We're just going to copy the sphere. Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, and we're just going to copy, paste the sphere lots of times. Right until we reach, oh, right until we reach the backdrop. Oh, there we go, just like that. Now that should be good. Um, just like that should be good, and actually we'll move our camera a bit more, just like that. Um, I think that'll be good enough. Doesn't matter too much. We'll actually move the thing back a bit. We want to make it as seamless as possible, so we're gonna move it back. Oops, we're gonna move it back and do that. And I'm gonna try to move the spheres. We want them a bit more separated, so I'm just going ahead and moving them so that they are a bit more separated. This is may take a bit of a time. May, may take a bit of a time. May take a while, <laughs> but it's fine. It's worth it. We need it to be perfect. There we go. So, okay, good. The spheres are much more separated now, and we will add one more in at the back here. Okay, now this should be good enough. Except that it's not, because the um, backdrop isn't scaled properly. I will go ahead and... Sorry, so we're going to have to select the backdrop. We're going to have to make it a bit bigger again. Damn it. All right. There we go. And grab this. Um, all right, that's almost good enough. We'll just move down the camera a bit. And scale up the backdrop again. I apologize for this, guys. It's taking quite a while. Um, there we go. That should be good. All right. Now that's done. Uh, we're going to make the material. So we're just going to make a new material and we're going to apply it to all of our spheres. And this will just be a nice reflective material that we can use. And I just want it to just have a nice reflective material. Nothing special. And in the color, we're going to make it like blue. Not purple. Make it like a nice. It should make like a nice cyan color. And the reflectance, we're gonna add a GGX reflection, and we will set the reflection strength to 25%. Should be good. Set the intuition to additive, and um, that is it. That's that's it. So we're, we got that material there. Now we're actually gonna make our um, top light. So we're just gonna do that by adding in a plane and scaling it up. There we go. 
Okay, we'll have to plane scales up now. That'll be our just like top light. Uh, we're gonna make new material and we're gonna apply it to that and we're gonna disable in this in this new material we're gonna disable all the channels except luminance and the illumination section we're gonna turn on GI area light and set the strength to 150. All right, good. Now let's deal with our render settings um, and then we'll do the actual depth of field. So you're gonna wanna have to you're gonna have to use the physical renderer if you want depth of field. So you're gonna enable depth of field there. Set your sampling quality to high and effect, set it to global illumination and any occlusion. And in the global illumination thing, we are gonna be using, uh, we're not gonna use a preset, we're actually gonna use our own uh, preset. We're gonna go ahead and secondary method, light mapping, maximum depth, 32. Samples, set that to custom sample count. Click the little arrow here. And so we're gonna set the sample count to 512. And we're gonna cache moving. Hey, in the light mapping, you're gonna set your path count to from 5,000 to 10,000. That's a lot of paths. I mean, you don't have to do that. You can totally do less or more, but I'm just doing that for now. So I think that's good. Uh, any options? No, we'll do a reflective caustics because we are doing reflections here, and that's always nice. Shouldn't add too much, um, too many seconds to our render time. Okay, uh, so I think that's it. Uh, yeah, we got depth of field enabled here. So your sampler to high. Um, you know, you can change your. A ray tracing engine. I'm just gonna be using Embry faster because Embry is pretty good ray tracing engine anyway. Um, and yeah, now we're gonna actually set up our depth of field. So uh, you're gonna just we'll, we'll go into our camera here. And um, when you click on it, uh, go to the physical section and you will see an f stop here. Now think of the f stop as the smaller the f stop is, the, the stronger the depth of field effect will be. I know it means more than that, but I'm not going to try to explain it right now. You can probably watch a separate video about um, f-stops and stuff. But um, for now, just think of it as the smaller it is, the the better, the more depth of field we're getting. So you know, for example, eight here, but this is no depth of field at all. Basically, it'll be it'll be a very long distance before um, we get any even the slightest depth of field. So we're going to bring it down to like a very small number, like 0 0.3 or something really small. And um, you don't need to change anything else. Uh, in the object, though, you want to grab here. We'll grab our sphere. So let's say we want, which sphere do you want in focus? So we'll select, um, let's say we want this sphere in focus, OK? Or yeah, we want this one in focus, right? Uh, we'll see that in the object, or in the content browser here. So that's sphere one there. So we're going to open up the camera and drag that sphere into the focus object here. Just drag it into there, and boom, you are done. And in the focus distance here, you can see it doesn't let us change it, but it tells us um, how far away the sphere is from the camera. So it will automatically put that in for us and it will automatically focus on the sphere. Okay, so we're going to check we got everything good. We got our lighting, we got everything like that. Uh, backdrop, I think we are done. Um, yeah, I think we're completely done. Maybe move your camera a bit more just like that. But, you know, that's, that's completely up to you guys what you want to do. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and render this and I will leave the final result at the end of the video and it will also be the thumbnail. So you'll have already seen it. But yeah, thank you everyone for watching. Uh, I hope you guys have a happy 2018, I guess. It's January 2nd today, technically. So um, I'm a bit late wishing you guys a happy new year. But yeah, I still want to do that. So yeah, thank you everyone for watching. Of course, leave a like, subscribe. Um, I'm really glad we've reached 72 subscribers. That's awesome. And um, wasn't expecting to get that many subscribers that quickly. Anyway, I will see you guys later. Goodbye.